He'll get that out of you. Amen. Yes. Yes. Look, he'll, 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 he'll cleanse you with his fire. He'll purge you. He'll make you red hot. Then he'll make you white hot. And you'll be pure and holy and sanctified. And all of a sudden you'll begin, you'll begin to love everybody. You'll love your enemies. You won't say, what can y'all do for me? You'll say, well, how can I serve? Uh, is there anything you want me to do? See, when, when, when you've grown cold on God, you become a taker. That's right, yeah. You take everything that's given, yeah. but you never give nothing. Yeah. Here's what he said. Quench not the spirit. Then he said this. Despise not prophesying. <clears throat> now I'm going to ask you something. And I'm, I'm, I'm down to the end of my notes. I've got 14 more pages. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Why is it in the, in the Pentecostal Church of God that we're part of, why is it that the gifts of the Spirit have almost died and are not existed in the church? Why is that? Why? You know what? When I first got saved, can I talk to you, Sister Sandra Kay? Because you're paying attention. The rest of them ain't paying no attention. <laughs> Just kidding. When I first got saved in 09, that last time, because I've been saved a hundred times or more. You know, you've probably been saved one time all your life. Not me. But when I prayed through that last time, it was over two years. Over two years. Over 700 days in a row that I prayed through to the Holy Ghost. Every day of my life. Every day. If it got to be 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and I hadn't prayed in other tongues, I'd go to a secret place somewhere out in the yard, I'd get in the barn, I'd get in my car, and I'd drive to the cemetery, and I'd pray until God prayed through me in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And when I'd come to a church service, if there was no diver's tongue, no interpretation, no word of prophecy, no word of wisdom, no word of knowledge, no gift of healing, no great faith, no manifestation, I'd go home and I'd be grieved in my spirit. Yes. And then I see the condition of the modern day church. And here, here's what I hear. Now, 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 I'm not mad with you. Now, here's what I hear. They say, well, it ain't like it used to be. And then I hear the older folks like you all, because you're older than 50, right? Okay, that means you. And I'm 51, so that means me. I'm the next generation there. Here's what I hear your generation say. Well, I don't agree with the way they do it now. Here's what I told my Aunt Doris. She taught Sunday school for 50 years in the church of God. And then they started changing some stuff and she quit and walked away. Then she'd get on the phone and say, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with this. I don't like that. I don't like this. I said, well, if you've been doing it for 50 years, come and join us and show us how to do it better. But I like the way we're doing it. Better than the way you ain't doing it at all. <laughs> See, I like the way I'm preaching better than the way y'all ain't preaching at all. <laughs> you won't preach. You won't shout. You won't let the Holy Ghost pray through you. You despise prophesy. Last night, uh, the Lord began to prophesy. I seen people just, they ain't even here tonight. Yeah. The home crowd. 75% of this congregation is visitors. That's right. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. Yes. That's right. You've been planning this revival for months. When I was a little boy, listen, brother, can I talk to you? You're paying attention now. When I was a little boy and we had revival, it run two and three and four weeks long. And it was, it, look, if you played on the baseball team, you couldn't go to baseball practice during the revival. If you, if you had a job, you had to work overtime, you went ahead and told your boss, man, look, this day right here, we got revival scheduled at our church, and I can't, I can't miss revival. That's right. Amen. Anymore, it's like I'll come if he preaches what I want to hear, and if he don't preach what I want to hear, I'm gonna you wait. I'm gonna smile in his face, and when he leaves, I'm gonna give the pastor what for. Oh. Right. You better watch your mouth, and you better watch your heart. And you better repent and get your heart right back with God because God has sent me by here as humble as I 
God know how to tell you that you need to stir up the gift of God. You need to repent in your heart. And if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost in your life in the past, and you have to pray through in these past three services, you need to repent and get your heart right back with God. You might say, I ain't done nothing wrong, Brother Danny. Why are you preaching that way to me? Well, you might not have robbed the bank. You might not have fornicated. But all you've done is neglected the fire. You haven't put any wood on it. You haven't put any praise on it. You ain't put any thanksgiving on it. You ain't put any worship on it. And therefore, they ain't nothing happening. What would God, what would God say to you? Knowing that I preached my heart out. Had done everything that I know to do. Hallelujah. Bless him, Lord. And you just sit there. Right. Thank you, Jesus. What would he say to me? He'd say, I sent my servant down there to you. That's right. And he stood there and looked at him. Yes. I anointed him with my word. I, I filled him with my spirit. Oh, I sent him to you. You won't do nothing. Rupa Niko Tuma Makaya Kitele Kuhu Kedil Hurai Kitele Kuhu I implore you by the love of Jesus Christ, open your heart wide and say, God, sweep me, garnish me, prepare me, fill me, sanctify me, fill me with fire, give me the gifts of the Holy Spirit, change my heart the way I'm doing it. I'm dead on the inside. I have no joy. The curse of your own personal neglect is broken fellowship with God. While the world has become a little churchy, the church has become mighty worldly. Yep. The only difference is, is y'all paint the outside of the tomb mm -hmm. with white paint. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. Mm -hmm. Instead of the church be changing the world, the church mm -hmm. has let its fire go out. And the consequence is that the world has changed the course of the church within the church. Right. And there's no Pentecostal demonstration anymore. And I hate to tell you this, but it's true. If you've got 10 people in this church, or 100 people, whatever, or 1,000 people, let's use a big number so that'll make you feel better. If you had 1,000 people in this church every Sunday, and 501 of them, we're not filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Technically, you're not a Pentecostal church because, because you have to have a majority to be declared anything. That's right. So if you've got 10 people in here and six of you are not filled with only at least six of you, then you can call yourself Pentecostal. So what if we just go rip the sign down out there and say we're no longer a church of God because we don't demonstrate what we proclaim we are. That's right. mm. Jesus. Yes. Why? Doesn't the fire fall here yes. anymore? Yes. Like Carl Richardson said, I'm sorry. Sir, we've abandoned that tradition. No. The fire doesn't fall here anymore. Oh. My God. Oh, yes. It grieves me. Yes. It grieves my spirit, man. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Not because you're hurting me, but because you're hurting my Lord. Yes. My Savior, my God, my King. You say He's your King. You say He's your God. You say He's your Savior. Where's your passion? 
I got a better question. Where's your compassion? Amen. We need a firefall. And it's not just for me to push a certain button to get you to jump up and say, Glory! Because I preach on the blood and you'll, you'll shout. I preach your pet doctrine and you'll be, Whoa, that boy ain't preaching tonight. I preach certain topics and, and fire you up because I have learned how to work a crowd. That's right. That's right. You don't believe that. No, I can get one of your favorite preachers over here and you'll shout all over this place. <laughs> because you're not worshiping God. I preach, listen to this. I went to Kentucky and I'm closing right now. Honestly, I'm, I'm going to get you out of here in just a minute. I got 10 minutes. I rode in a car with a preacher up to Kentucky one time. And he began to tell me, he said, now look, Brother Danny, these people are fire baptized. I said, okay. He said, they ain't like y'all in North Carolina. He said, these people right here now, they fire baptized. I, I never did understand what he was talking about, but he kept emphasizing fire baptized. Well, I was filled with the Holy Ghost too. Yeah, amen. So we got up there and they let me preach. Before I got to preach, an older man that they knew, they didn't know me from Johnny Adam Appleseed. An older man that they knew got up and exhorted a little bit. Give God a praise, everybody. Woo! I said, my God, this is going to be a good service. <laughs> Welcome Danny Bird from North Carolina. He's a younger evangelist. Welcome to the pulpit, everybody. <laughs> you know what I preached on? The blood that Jesus shed. <laughs> and they sit there like this for an hour. <laughs> and they have amen corners up there. Y'all ain't holy like they are. <laughs> <laughs> they had the women on this side, little short pew right here. Three of them. All, all the elder women sit on this side. The elder men sit on this side. And that's what an amen corner is. When you're preaching, they're supposed to be agging you on. We ain't got none of them in here. <laughs> they're supposed to be four of them. They ain't got no mag me on. They were checking me out. <laughs> Doing a critical analysis of who I was, trying to figure out if I was real or fake. <laughs> I preached my heart out. I went and sat down like I'm getting ready to do it. <laughs> and this one lady got up. And for 45 minutes, she lamb blasted that congregation. And she said, that boy right there preached the word of God to y'all. And y'all are twice dead, plugged up by the roots because you don't know him. You won't worship God because you don't know him. She said, when that other preacher got up there, you knew who he was. Well, you'd run and shout and dance in the aisle because you knew him. So you're familiar with him. But that boy right there, you don't even know him. But he preached the gospel to you. He preached the blood. He preached the cross. He preached the death, the burial, the resurrection. See, what amazes me is people really ain't serving God. You're serving a picture of religion that points to God, but you're not really worshiping the God of the religion that is pointing to. Because if that was true, then when they sing, you would shout. When I preach, you would shout. Because we're all on the same team. And here's what the deal is. You let your fire go out, and now you become so critical, analyzing everything, you don't know what's real and what's holy and what's pure and what's true or not. You can't even tell between who's evil and who's not evil. I'm trying to tell you that God loves you and He wants to pour His Spirit out upon you. If you would just open your heart and say, Here I am. I believe. I'm forgiveness. Oh. 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 Oh.
Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Uh, if you're able and you ain't crippled, raise your hands up like this. Yeah. Uh, and say, God, uh, yeah. I don't want it to be said that the fire doesn't fall here anymore. God, I need your fire to fall on me. Lift up your hands to it. Not because just I'm telling you to do it because you want to do it. Do it and say, God, let me be a spiritual father and fill me up with your glory. God, do something in this tonight. God, take out the sinister religious spirit that plagues our sanctuary, God, and fill it with your fresh oil of gladness and praise and honor and adoration, God. Lord, let your fire fall on your people again. God, you're a holy God. There's none beside you. You're majestic. You're holy. You're high. Your train fills the temple. I want to open 